But um, this is picture number one because it's my first ever Sassoon picture. Uh, it was done in 1981 and I remember turning up at the shoot very, very nervous as a young lad. Like everyone when they were 19, I had these uh, delusions of revolutionising the Sassoon methodology with hair. So I did this undercut fringe, which uh, I thought was very revolutionary, which was actually, it was kind of quite revolutionary at the time, because it was the first time it had ever been done. I didn't want the fringe colour, but they, because uh, I was only a kid, they sort of took it out of my hands and coloured this fringe bright purple. And everyone, thought, everyone then thought it was a headband, which it wasn't ever supposed to be. And they also called it Toya, which I hated. So they kind of ruined it, but, um, but yeah, so it's still, it's still, I suppose it's still one of my favourite pictures because it's my first ever one. The next one, this is Claire. This was kind, it's kind of special because I was in, I transferred to Manchester by this time and I was the assistant art director and I'd been brought down to do um, what we called the teachings, which was the collection launch, which we did in Davis Mews School. And Annie Humphreys, I asked her to colour it for me and we were doing a technique called animals at the time, which was laying the hair out on the foil bleaching a piece and then colouring it, bleaching it in bands all the way through so it looked like animal's fur. And because it was such a long process, I didn't actually get her back to go on stage with her until just before I was supposed to go on, so I didn't cut any of it. So I went on stage not knowing what I was doing and Christopher Brooker was comparing the show. I mean, I was quite nervous on stage, start, started cutting it and I just chopped a lump out of the top, first of all, and he came over and he said, you've got 15 minutes left. And I was like, right. And as I cut this piece off the top, I let it fall and it fell in these two little pieces, so I just cut lines through it. So I did it in 20 minutes, which was kind of quite amazing, really. I couldn't do a haircut in 20 minutes. I doubt if I could do a haircut in 20 hours now. <laughs> I've always loved the mix between kind of conceptual hair and what I'd call more commercial hair. So this picture, um, I probably cut this in about 80, probably 84, 85. And I was still in Manchester and I had this girl, she was really beautiful, amazing colour eyes. And we were shooting in her apartment, which was right up on the top of the building. You can sort of make out the chimneys in the back. And she kept disappearing and coming back. And every time she went out, she obviously went to have a drink with someone. So each time she came back, she was, seemed to be more and more drunk. And she's getting more and more drunk. And I'm thinking this shoot is going to be a nightmare. It's going to look ridiculous. And anyway, then she got out this huge light and we were in a tiny little studio room, aimed this light at this girl and this was the result. So you've got that slightly sun-kissed sort of look. She looks beautiful. And uh, just a nice little layered kind of haircut, very soft. But I just love it because it is so, you know, little black dress, little kind of short gamine haircut. And I suppose in my more commercial times, whatever, this is the kind of work that I do. Short, soft, loose, sort of scruffy hair. The 90s, so this is, um, I suppose everyone has their muses throughout the years and in the 90s it was definitely this girl, Lucy King. She had this very androgynous kind of face, really skinny, bean poly sort of girl. Ever since I was 12, I went to see David Bowie when I was 12 with my sister and so I've been into him ever since then. That was in 1972, so he was a lad insane Ziggy Stardust then. And this was, uh, this was my version of the haircut that he had on the album cover Low when it was like white, then orange, and then red. So very, really heavy, long front, and uh, yeah, a bit of sort of space age styling, really. Yeah. So another version of soft, loose hair. Uh, this was a 17-year-old Argentinian girl, which is kind of incredible. She was absolutely brilliant. Didn't speak a word of English. The texture of the hair is really nice. The way it's kind of, the way the hair moves, nice and scruffy, loose. And again, I kind of tried to make it, I love the idea that people will, could wear this. It's not too crazy. Do you think people are quite surprised that you've got so many commercial looks in there? Because you're quite well known for your graphic. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I do like the stronger ones as well, but I, but I love hair like this. You know, I love both, really. I think that's the, that's the key. You know, if it was all mad, it, you, you'd kind of get bored with it. Sometimes I kind of just like hair that's just loose and flowing. Working with the creative team, they're the biggest inspiration to me. It's just all about talking about ideas and, you know, I might think of something to do and then I'll speak to one of the team and they'll say, what, you know, you could add this or could add that. So I think when you're working with other creative people, you'll always come up with something more than you thought of originally. I mean, I love film and I love theatre and I love, you know, photography especially, 
Uh, music is a huge part of what I do. Music and well, not yeah, music and style combined. So I get lots of inspiration there. And sometimes you just think things up. You know, you just kind of walk along, and all of a sudden you think, what if you, like for example, this? I thought to myself, what if you did? I was trying to think of a way, and this is going to sound totally ridiculous, but I was trying to think of a way. You know, when little kids, when they when you see them on the way to school and their mum's obviously kind of come here and she's kind of done that to their hair in the front, but then the back still like, you know, kind of completely still. I was thinking, and I love the look of that because it's just kind of happened. And I thought, what, how could you do a haircut that kind of looked like that? And then I started to think of like a, a kind of bob shape with the back all kind of back combed or something. And I thought, well, if you took a triangle and permed it and made it kind of really stick out, you could cut a bob into the front and it would kind, you know, it would kind of work. So that's where that sort of came from. And then we, we did loads of versions of these. And in the end, I, I saw a, um, a fashion show by Yoji Yamamoto, who's one of the, my biggest inspirations. If ever, if ever I'm sort of stuck for an idea, I'll always, I've got loads of books at home and I'll just kind of get my Yoji Yamamoto book out and leaf through that. Not because it, you know, I look at a dress and think, oh, I'll do a haircut like that. It's just the degree of creativity and thought process that he puts into his work that inspires me to really think of something. And he did a fashion show and all his models had really long curly hair and he just put these funny little wigs on the top. This is special because it was my first collection as uh, international creative director. It's a collection called Spiral and um, it's based on the Sassoon classic box bob picture so little kind of fringe side, bit asymmetrical. And then the, the interior, I just cut in this kind of curve. So basically you, you get like a really long section of hair that just trails over the top of the shape. And I wanted to show Sassoon hair in motion. And the colour's beautiful here as well. Annie Humphreys again did the colour for me. Yeah, I love this. And I think the makeup's divine as well. No, I, I think out of all of the pictures that I've shown you, the first picture, Toya, and this picture are my favourites, be, purely because um, this was one of the first shoots I was in charge of where we were working with Procter & Gamble. Worked with Lachlan Bailey, photographer, who's absolutely brilliant. And this was the first picture of the first shoot I did with him, literally frame one. And uh, I'd cut her hair into this little kind of, you can see, like a little very quintessential Sassoon shape. And she's got beautiful hair to cut, so it sat perfectly. And I'd said to Lachlan, I wanted to do this thing that was like bright coloured clothes, really amazing um, skin, and then just the hair. So we had this kind of um, makeup artist was brilliant, doing all this makeup. Put her in this red stretchy kind of Azadine Alaya dress, and then with the black hair. So you've got red, white, and black. And the first picture he took, everyone was just stood watching the monitor. And when it, you know, when it came through the thing, everyone was just like, wow, you know, that was, that was it. I've always, even, even if it's very, very strong, I've always tried to make it so that it, people don't look back on him 15, 20 years' time and go, blimey, what on earth was he thinking? Well, they might do, I don't know, but, but I try not to.